In this video, we're on Lesson 1.3, Practice Problems, on page 27 in our workbook. Lola is buying beach balls for her beach theme party. Each package contains, contains six beach balls. Let's highlight that. Each package, six beach balls. Generate the set of ordered pairs for the ratio relationship between the beach balls and the packages for a total of four packages. Then graph the relationship on the coordinate plane below. Describe the pattern in the graph. So we have a lot to do here. We need to make our table. Let's start with that. The two things that are being compared are the balls and the package. So we're gonna write package. And then balls. We know there are going to be four packages, one, two, three, four. It tells me that up above, there are six balls in one package. Six goes here, and that sets the ratio relationship. We're going to count by sixes. Six, 12, 18, 24. Since we need to graph those, let's write our ordered pairs off to the side. It's parentheses one comma six parentheses 2 comma 12, parentheses 3 comma 18, parentheses 4 comma 24. Let's draw an arrow and label those ordered pairs. Now we're ready to graph them. They already have the graph nicely set up for us. Number of packages, number of beach balls. In one package, there are six balls. Hmm, I don't see a six on here. Maybe it isn't just counting by fours. I wonder if it's counting by twos. Two, four, six, eight, and that works. 10, 12, 14. Maybe slide a couple extra numbers in here to help you out. That's a little bit easier. We start at the origin. We go over to one and up to six, plot the point. Over to two, up to 12. Over to three and up to 18. Over to four, up to 24. Let's go back and double check. Generate a ratio relationship between these. We did that. Graph them. Okay, we've done that. Now we need to describe the pattern in the graph. the number of balls increases by six for each package. It's going up by sixes. Let's read the next one. A sloth travels about seven feet every minute. There's my ratio relationship, seven feet, one minute. Generate a set of ordered pairs for this relationship between the total distance traveled and the number of minutes. And it wants you to do up to four minutes. Graph it and describe the relationship. Since you're getting the hang of this, I'm gonna go a little bit quicker. Let's make our table, time, distance. It tells me up here, count from one to four. One, two, three, four. The distance traveled is seven feet for every one minute. Now I count by sevens. Seven, 14, 21, 28. Let's do our ordered pairs. Parentheses, one comma seven, two comma 14, three comma 21, 4 comma 28. Let's graph those. Here's our time. So we go over to 1, up to 7. Hmm, I don't quite see 7 up there. I wonder what this is counting by. Looks like it's counting by 2s. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 
22, 24, 26. So we're counting by twos. So right here in the middle of 6 and 8 is 7. It's kind of annoying, isn't it? If they would have just counted by 7s on this number line, it would be perfect. Let's go over to 2, up to 14. That one's exact, so that one's nice. Go over to 3, up to 21. There's 20, so 21 is right in the middle. Go over to 4 and up to 28. And there you have it. Number 3. Two friends are making scrapbooks. The number of photos Lexi and Audrey place on each page of their scrapbook is shown in the graph. Describe the ratio relationship for each person. So we're going to look at Lexi and Audrey. I'm going to write Lexi's name. And we are comparing the pages and pictures. Pages, and I think they call them photos. Yep, photos. If I find Lexi, Lexi's in light, she's one one page, she has four pictures. One page, four pictures. Now I'm going to look at Audrey. Pages, pictures. Audrey's the one in dark. For every one page, she puts, and I have to figure out what number is between four and eight. So on one page, so you should be thinking about that. We have four, five, six, seven, eight. So what are your thoughts on that? Does she put six pictures on one page? Well, let's finish our ratio table in just a minute. Let's do Lexi's. She's two eight. Then three twelve. Then four sixteen. Let's double check the pattern for Audrey. I see there are two that are exactly on the line. So if one to six is correct, then on page two, she should be on 12. Two pages, 12 pictures. Yep, that's right. So this, I just confirmed we are counting by sixes. You can look at the ones that are exactly on the intersecting lines. Six, twelve, eighteen, and then twenty-four. Double check. I can go over to four. Yep, right up to twenty-four. That's it. Let's flip the page. Number four at the top is a multi-select problem. So you're going to read the problem to yourself, and then let's figure out which of the following is true about the relationship. Go ahead and pause the video and read this to yourself. All right, now that you've read it, let's start selecting all of the things that match the graph to the right. Every four minutes, Lacey ran one lap. So I'm gonna go over here, find four minutes. Did she run one lap? Yep, that is true. So I'm gonna check it off. If I want to, I can even write a little ratio table over here, and that might help me. Let's do that. Laps time. Number of laps goes 1, 2, 3, 4. And the time goes 4, 8, 12, 16. Sometimes a graph is quicker, and other times a table is quicker. Lacey ran eight laps in two minutes. Well, if I look at eight laps, I would have to extend my table. So I'm going to extend it um, to here. To go from four laps to eight laps, it's twice the amount. And already right here it says 16. So I know this is going to be a no, but I'm just showing you that if I double this, it's actually going to take 32. 
minutes to do the eight laps. So I can prove that that one's not right. It took Lacey one minute to run four laps. Well, here's four laps at our table. Did it take her one minute? No, that's not correct. In 16 minutes, here's 16, Lacey completed four laps. Yes, she did. Based on the relationship, it would take Lacey 20 minutes to complete five laps. Well, I'm not sure about that. So let's just double check. Let's put five in our table, even though now we're starting to get out of order. But here, if I go one, two, three, four, and I would have went in order five, it would be four, eight, 12, 16, and then this would be 20. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Let's do number five. Identifying structure. There are four quarters for every one dollar and ten dimes for every dollar. Without graphing, would the, relation, would the ratio of quarters to dollars or dimes to dollars appear to have a steeper line? Well, we can do a quick table to prove this. So quarters to dollars, Q to D, and we know that's four quarters to one dollar. And let's just put a couple of numbers, four, eight, twelve. One, two, three. And then over here, um, I'm actually going to write out dimes. And then I'll just put a symbol, like just a dollar with a dollar sign. And then dimes, it's 10, 20, 30. And this is one, two, three. Dimes to dollars is definitely going to be steeper. Dimes to dollars is steeper because 10 is bigger than 4. The 10 is bigger than 4. So this is going 10 and then jumping to 20 and then jumping to 30. Well, this is staying a little tighter together. This is going to be steeper. Let's talk about number six. What are the advantages of graphing when solving a problem that involves ratios? We can use the graph above to answer this. The graph allows you to see the patterns. It also helps you make, let's add, and make predictions. Almost done, we're gonna do the last two. The table gives the number of beads to make bracelets of certain lengths. Suppose you graph the ordered pairs. Would the point 10.5 and 42 make sense in this context? Well, notice how this is going just a little bit more. So will this be 42 is what they're asking us. We need to take this first one, 7 to, 7 to 28, and we're going to use that. We're going to scale it back. 7 to 28. Let's divide by 7. When we do that, we get like a unit rate. 1 to 4. Now that we have 1 to 4, we can figure out how to go to 10.5. Well, 1 times 10.5 is 10.5. If 4 times 10.5 gets me 42, then I know that's correct. You may need to do that off to the side. 10.5 times 4. 4 times 5 is 20. Carried your 2. 4 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2, and 4 times 1 is 4. There's one decimal place, so I move my decimal over 1. Yes, that is correct. Yes, it makes sense. Let's do number eight. For every second, the average green sea turtle can swim nine meters. 
represent how far a green sea turtle can swim up to four seconds. So here's my time. One, two, three, four. That represents time in seconds. The distance, it says nine meters for every one second. That means 18, 27, 36. Now that I know that, I can plot my points. If I'm looking over here, it's not really counting by tens, it was actually counting by five. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I can add those other numbers in there if I need to. I think it's helpful. Now let's plot our points. Go over to one, up to nine. It's just under the 10. Go over to 2, up to 18, that's under the 20. Over to 3, up to 27, that's below the 30. Over to 4, up to 36, that's just above the 35. 